As some of you may know, I went off the deep end after enjoying filtered coffee for so many years and purchased an espresso machine. I've had my espresso machine now for about six months and I've finally dialed in my setup and workflow. Today, we'll be taking a look at the setup. This video is brought to you by Ritual, more on them later. So this is my coffee bar and we're gonna jump right in. We'll start with the dosing cellar. I used to dose my beans right before brewing, but this thing has been a welcome luxury. Pre-dosing beans makes the morning routine flow a thing of beauty. The 12 vials are enough to store a majority of a 12 ounce coffee bag and any leftover beans are kept in this fellow Atmos vacuum canister. The canister mechanics can feel a little gimmicky, but the vacuum system does a pretty good job of keeping the coffee fresh. Next to the beans awaiting to be dosed, I also keep my multivitamins since I never seem to forget about coffee, but always forget to take my daily multivitamin. Keeping multivitamins close to coffee ensures I will always take them. These multivitamins come from today's sponsor, Ritual. Their Essentials for Men contains 10 high quality nutrients like vitamin A, D, omega-3, and zinc, which are all, all difficult for men to get from their diet alone. The delayed release capsule design is gentle on an empty stomach, and there's a mint tab in every bottle to keep your vitamins smelling fresh. Ritual has vitamins to support everyone, from women, 50 plus, prenatal, postnatal, and teen vitamins. Transparency is at the core of everything Ritual does, from the way nutrients are sourced to the environmental impact the materials use to ship thousands of orders. You can fill in the gaps in your diet with essentials for men, a small step that helps support a healthy foundation for your body. Ritual is offering 20% off your first month by going to ritual.com slash huga20 and using code huga20 at checkout. Thank you to Ritual for sponsoring this video. For dosing into the vials of the cellar, I use the funnel that is conveniently stored on the stand. I'll use the dosing cup for my grinder and my espresso scale to measure out and dose my beans. When I first got into espresso, I started off with an 18 gram dose, but I've since started to up dose to 20 grams after talking with a subscriber. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the difference as I'm still picking up on those little nuances, but nevertheless, the best part about coffee is the experimentation. Coffee is dosed, but before we get into the main event, we're actually going to start with the supporting cast and go over all of the accessories I use for making espresso as well as machine maintenance. This is my espresso drawer. If you couldn't tell, I spent quite a bit of time researching and organizing it. If I do say so myself, I do think that this thing is a thing of beauty. I adapted a tool organizing solution called Tool Grid to create a custom espresso tool layout. In terms of layout, I positioned tools that were used more often towards the front and closer to the espresso machine, so things that I use daily like my WDT tool and tamp are accessible without having to fully open the drawer. For the rest of the drawer, the layout was based on access to the drawer. From right to left, we have a La Morzoka barista brush which is used at the end of every session to sweep away any stray coffee grounds. Next to that, we have a spanner wrench that is used to remove the diffuser. This tool is used weekly to remove the diffuser and silicon gasket around it. I prefer removing the diffuser entirely to gain access to the gasket so I can clean it and I don't need a sharp pick to fish out the gasket. The nice thing about adapting a tool specific organizing solution is that it works seamlessly with wrenches and screwdrivers. I use screwdriver mounts to house my coffee grinder's cleaning brush and 10 mm socket driver. I keep my grounds bin off the counter and in the drawer to keep the countertop as open as possible. At the end of each session, I'll let the grounds cool down and then dump them before placing them back in the drawer. Behind the grounds bin, we have the fellow 12 ounce steaming pitcher. My WDT tool is from Ulta and is probably the best thing I've added to my setup. 
Using the Weiss distribution technique, a special shots have been more consistent and I've resolved most of my channeling issues. The tool sits on a 3D printed stand to protect the needles from damage and deformation. My tamp of choice is the Pullman Big Step. The precision on this tool is so satisfying as it is machined slightly larger to fill 58 millimeter porter filter baskets with little to no dead space along the perimeter when placed inside the basket. For water treatment, I use third wave espresso capsules. I've done much experimentation with water, but found this solution to be easy enough and gives me peace of mind knowing that the water going into my machine won't damage it. Next to the water treatment capsules, we have a tub of Molly Coat nested inside my blind porter filter basket. I use the Molly Coat to lubricate the group head gasket as needed, and the blind porter filter basket is used weekly to back flush the machine to keep it clean. To back flush, I use the detergent that came with the machine, and then for grinder cleaning, I like to use Grinds tablets before brushing out the grinder. I find that while not totally necessary, the tablets absorb any leftover coffee oils, drying out the grinder and making it even easier to clean. The last thing kept in the drawer is the coffee that I'm resting. Lately, I've been drinking whatever coffee comes from the Roaster's Choice subscription from my hometown favorite roaster, Coffee and Tea Collective, down in San Diego, California. This particular coffee is on the lighter side and I haven't quite dialed in the recipe. However, everything tastes pretty good so far. Onto the main event, the heart of this setup is the Nice Zero Grinder and the La Morzocco Linea Mini. The Nice Zero Grinder is pretty much the go-to single nose grinder, and rightfully so. 63mm conical burrs deliver consistently great coffee and the workflow is perfect. I wish more grinder companies would follow the Nice Zero's ergonomics. All the high touch points are kept near each other, the lid, the grind adjustment, and the on-off switch. I'm not sure why other companies keep placing the on-off switch at the bottom and towards the back. It is way more convenient having easier access to something you have to use every time. Maintenance on this grinder is also enjoyable. A single screw holds everything together and brushing out the machine takes less than five minutes. Finally, the toolless calibration makes it easy to recalibrate after cleaning and ensures consistent grinds every time. Last but not least, we have the La Morzocco Linea Mini in white. There are plenty of options when it comes to espresso machines. The main driver behind the purchase of this particular one was that I wanted a front load water reservoir. In terms of use and workflow, I figured it would be easier to load water from the front rather than overhead. Aesthetically, I also like the way this machine looks on the counter with its minimal white and timeless design. This is the latest version with IoT capability. The auto on off is a welcome sight every morning when the machine is ready to go and cups are already warm. Speaking of cups, we have three sets to make cortados, flat whites, and lattes. My favorite cup is the handmade flat white ceramics. These were made by a subscriber, Nick Nguyen, and there was something special about sipping coffee from a handmade cup. The wabi-sabi and beautiful imperfections add to the overall experience. Nick, if you're watching, thank you. These cups are absolutely amazing. Back to the machine, it is PID controlled, so water temperature is accurate and the machine can pull great shots. Sadly, no flow control despite the shape of the brew paddle, but the machine does have a great steam boiler. There is a huge aftermarket for the Linea Mini, but I've kept my modifications simple. On the group head, we have an IMS shower screen to better distribute water. And on the back of the water reservoir, I added a quick disconnect to make it easier to remove the water reservoir for weekly cleaning. This setup has opened up a whole new genre of coffee for me to explore. Building the setup was also half the fun. From selecting the perfect espresso tools to meticulously organizing them to serial killer levels of organization. I hope you enjoyed this look at the espresso setup. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.